Dear China, you have been amazing. Your food was great. Your natural landscape, oh, dare to die for. Everything was almost perfect. Until recently, things got a bit messy and unsure. So we've decided to leave. Hello guys. Uh, since September this year, Queenie and I have made the decision to leave China for good. Uh, and there are many reasons why we chose to leave China, but you know, mainly the zero COVID policy. And I'm not gonna lie, recently things have been getting a little out of hand. But you know, there are rumors circulating around that the government's gonna loosen down the zero COVID or even scrape the entire policy. But um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put my hopes on it. But anyway, just a quick summary on what has been happening here in China over the past few years. So China has been in this COVID bubble for almost three years now. And it's really tiring. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's extremely tiring. Flights in and out of this country is still extremely expensive because there are very limited flights in. So yeah, it's, it's just very inconvenient to fly in and out of the country. But aside from that, hotel quarantines are still a thing here. Like nowhere else, or maybe North Korea, but yeah, nowhere else will you hear hotel quarantine ever again. And mind you, the hotel quarantine is not paid by the government, it's, it's out of your own pocket. And to add to that, statewide lockdowns can happen at any time and for any duration. So it's really scary. Uh, flights can be cancelled anytime. So whether is it domestic or international flight, you know, you are subjected to a sudden lockdown and then you have to cancel your flight or if your city is considered high risk they'll just lock down your cities and flights will be you know cancelled by the airlines but not only flights are being affected imagine hotels restaurants they'll all be shut down in a moment's notice so it's like a switch uh, imagine you're at disneyland disneyland shanghai and you're there just enjoying yourself suddenly they receive news that someone in there might be a positive case and they just close the door and you're stuck in there. Everyone will have to go through a test and you know, it might last all the way to midnight. So, you know, it's, it's just the level of uncertainty is just insane, it's just crazy. By the way, if you're working, uh, the companies will not subsidize your leave if you are under lockdown or you're sick with COVID. You basically have to use your own personal leave, which is why if you're running a business or basically you're living day to day, or just a normal employee, you know, it, it's gonna affect you in a very big way and there are no government subsidies for, for any of this. And so imagine being a businessman, you still have to pay rent even though you are not allowed to operate your business. So that's why these few days, uh, sorry, these few years, the rate of restaurants turning around is just uncountable. It's just, everyone is just changing within like months because they're just not making profit. And also Shanghai and Xinjiang, they were in lockdown for months. Uh, they can't step out of their, their houses. Imagine that, I, I just can't imagine going through that. And all they get are like food rations. Like it, it's, just, it's just so tiring. But yeah, in most cities it's actually not too bad for without the lockdowns. So uh, typically what happens is that uh, you have to get one test every two, three days um, to be able to go anywhere. And that's, that's that's pretty much okay if there is no lockdowns. But if you're positive, then they'll send you to the COVID detention center or isolation center. Um, and you know, you've seen news about it, people talking about it, that the conditions aren't very good. And yeah, I, I personally haven't been there, touch wood, and I don't want to. But I've heard that the conditions of those isolation centers are basically a game of dice, really. You can check out some other channels who've personally experienced it and yeah, not very promising but the craziest thing of all is that people are more afraid to be sent to the isolation center than to actually get the virus so that that speaks a lot but ultimately everyone's really tired you know after three years the situation hasn't improved in fact it's gotten worse uh, also you know recently there's been the world cup incident everyone here i don't know how many million soccer fans here in china stuck onto their tv and they just realized that oh my god everyone around the world is not wearing masks there's no covid restrictions so you know then the people start to think like oh, they, they feel cheated um and like 
what's the point of all this right so yeah that's the general con not not it's not that everyone feels this way but majority of the people here feels that way so yeah uh and you know recently uh, this is a bit of a touchy situation a bit sensitive here but there's been a lot of riots protests around china because of the death caused by the zero covid policy you know as a foreigner i want to remain neutral because it's not my country i i don't get to say how it's being run you know if the government if the government knows what's best you know or the people believe in the government then you know they should proceed on how they normally would so i don't really want to comment too much on that um, there are many other channels who have done that so you can you know check out the channel see what they think but you know this this covid virus right it's already been considered as just a serious case of flu everywhere around the world so china is essentially trying to achieve zero flu and that that is just that is just impossible in my opinion so this policy really affects you all the way down to how you live your everyday life which is why it's it's really difficult to live here to me it's more like it's just surviving you're not actually living because you are stuck at home you you can't plan ahead you basically have no control of everything so yeah so for all those reasons we have decided to leave unfortunately uh initially we were very happy that uh, we are we, are, we finally got the tickets and we are leaving but tomorrow is the day that we're flying and it's a bit of a feeling a bit down and sad i don't know why because I guess it's how you feel every time you leave somewhere that you've lived for a couple of, couple of years, I think. But how did things get to where it is today? I'm going to be very neutral here because I'm not pro or against any government. So yeah, I'm going to try and be very neutral. First of all, when the head makes the decision, it is then passed down onto the different provincial governments. And then from there, that responsibility is then passed down on to the districts, so on and so forth, all the way down to your estate community. Which is why every province, every city, every district, every community has their own rules and regulation, which, which makes it extremely confusing. And that results in a very complicated situation where things are constantly changing because there is, a, there is no clear instructions. Now next, there is an issue of censorship here. Not my place to say whether it's good or bad. But you know, history helps us to learn from our mistakes. That's how things and how we evolve to be better. You know, we learn from our mistakes. So if you think about it, if current tragedies or mistakes were to be cancelled off, then, you know, people in the future can't learn from our current mistakes so then if current tragedies and mistakes were to be erased then there wouldn't be history people will forget and so you know mistakes the wrongdoings will happen over and over again because there's there's nothing to learn from there is no lesson there coupled with the censorship um, the one party ruler presents china in a very difficult situation where there is no contender or a challenger per se because if the policy doesn't work there isn't anyone or a second opinion to say hey maybe we should try this there is just no plan b because that's how a one party ruling system works there shouldn't be any other opinion so without history to tell you that oh this is a mistake or without someone to say hey maybe this is a better solution you know it's very difficult to see from one point of view that it's what is right and what is wrong do you get what i mean yeah for that it's very difficult to to admit if something needs to be changed look at the one child policy for example it was a very good solution short-term solution at that point of time to help with the overpopulation of china but you know fast forward 36 years now china's facing its lowest birth rate ever in decades so so the zero covid policy is yet another one of these policies but anyway, the thoughts about zero COVID policy has been uh, highly contested here in China between the locals. Uh, despite what Western media has portrayed, uh, there are actually people here, not, not everyone supports um, scraping the zero COVID policy. In fact, there are many people who support you know, continuing this 
the lockdowns and all the strict regulations. Those who want the policy to be cancelled off are mainly um, young people or people whose lives have been, have been affected, like restaurant owners, um, people who just can't plan their daily lives, like myself, um, travellers. Uh, imagine you're a restaurant owner, like I said, you, you just can't plan ahead or you're a businessman, you just can't plan ahead of your business. So yeah, it's just very difficult. But those who are supportive of the government's zero COVID policy are basically those who are old and frail, who who feel like um, they'll, you know, they'll suffer a lot of repercussion if they actually get the COVID virus. Ooh, it's cold. Uh, and also those people who I've met people whose lives hasn't been affected much by the policy because all they do is just stay at home. Yeah, um, yeah. so there are actually a lot of people here who support the government. So how all of this has affected Queenie and I is that we've been planning a lot of trips at the start of this year and each time we were faced with you know, the different restrictions of sudden lockdowns, you know, our estate being closed or sealed. Oh. Ooh, it's getting cold. Let's let's go back up. Ooh, sorry, it's a bit cold, so I had to come back up into my apartment. But anyway, how all of this has affected us is that since you know the start of this year, we've been planning a lot of trips. In April, we wanted to go to Tibet, but but suddenly in April, Tibet had like a a surge of COVID cases, so. So the Tibet government decided to, you know, stop tourists from entering. And then after that, we decided to go to many other places and the same story happened again and again and again, which is why we thought that uh, it, it's, it just isn't working for us. So after deciding that we will be leaving China, we decided to do a great China trip. Like we're going to visit all the different cities like Chengdu, Harbin, just do one round around China before leaving. Um, but as you all know, China has entered the biggest lockdown party ever. So, well, that got scraped. So then we thought, okay, we'll be doing the biggest Beijing food adventure before we leave. And again, Beijing got locked down. Everything got closed, restaurants. Um, yeah, so... And then since then, my building has been locked down, has been sealed shut for three times in this month alone. So yeah, from the Great China trip, it's been altered to the uh, Great China Lockdown. Such an ironic story. Uh, and the reason why there are so many lockdowns in Beijing is because they do um, the test in a bunch of 10. So to make things efficient, to make the testing efficient, they, they test for the virus uh, as a bunch of 10. So if any one of those batch is positive, then you know, um, all 10 of those whose swap samples are in there will be notified and you know, locked. But guys, you know what? I want to clarify something uh, before the haters get to me. Um, I, I don't hate China, I don't hate the government, but there are just things in all countries that are good and there are definitely going to be things that are bad. So in China, you know, you have good food, good people, um, things are cheap here, things are convenient, they have a lot of natural beauties. But then on the other hand, you have things that affect the simplest of everyday life. So I, I don't believe that there's a perfect country where things, where people are like happy with everything. There's gonna be some things that you are happy with and some things that you're not happy with. You just have to move to a place that the good far outweigh the bad for me. So yeah, I'm, I'm trying to provide a very neutral point of view based on my experience. So obviously, like I've mentioned, Queenie and I, we, we don't get to eat the good food that we like. We don't get to go out and travel. We don't get to meet people. We don't get to see all the beautiful sceneries that we love about China. So that's why we made the choice to leave. Uh, yeah, we are sad and frustrated, but well, life goes on, right? Um, yeah, have a look. We're all packed up and ready to go. So we're flying out of China from Tianjin to Bangkok. Fingers crossed that everything goes smoothly. So for the next couple of weeks, we'll be spending time with our friends and family um, and also do some content about Singapore and Thailand. In the meantime, guys, many thanks for joining and yeah, have a good one. Mm -hmm.